The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 12th magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, TV Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you not make that little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Now is just fine. Dial on in 877-927-6648. You internationally, 727-445-1044. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. In that heading, just put radio show question. And inside the Tigers, and well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show kickstarted on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Magical Monday as well. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow trading out 69 points, about three tenths percent to the downside. SP down four tenths, about 10, 10 points. Trading out at 2421. NDX 100 is the uh, culprit, along with the uh, semis out here, both down a little over 1%. Um, transports are up 18 bucks. Uh, gold is down too. The spot volatility index up 12.6% as we speak right now. That's important to know. It's up a buck 35. Lights we crude up 32 pennies. Bonds are trading slightly higher. AutoZone is one in the zone, up eight dollars and change, one to four tenths percent. Acuity brands up six bucks. Khaki International that's up four percent or five bucks. Simon Property Group up four. Uh, Loxo Oncology up four. Science. Mm, applications International, whatever that means, that is up uh, 330. To the downside, it is Priceline leading the charge off nearly 2% or 35 buckaroonies. Intuitive Surgical down 19, that's down 2%. Amazon is off 18, Google's off 19, Equinix down 17, uh, Universal Display down 7% uh, or 9 bucks. So we've got things to look at, of course. I want to be able to. Uh, Look at what exactly you want to look at. So at this stage here, I don't have any requests that I see. I've got one request here. Let's, let's go ahead and take that request first. Steve, can you check on the correlation of the yen with uh, gold, please? You know, cause it uh, got a little uncorrelated earlier in the day. So let's go check on that for you. See if it has uh, joined back up here. Um, I think I've got to pull that one back open on my screen. But I don't know. I'm assuming you were watching it. And what I can say is it did get a little bit uncorrelated Um when I was looking at that chart, here's the 10 minute chart. And that's really what you, that's, well, I guess it's since we've started here, that means we're going to go ahead and take a look at gold bonds and the uh, yen uh, first. But uh, what I was saying when I, when I suggested to you that it got a little bit uncorrelated, um, here, if we take a look at about three o'clock this morning, let's just start from here. And that's really where the crosshairs of my, of my uh, system are. Uh, you can see that it just really has been moving higher. Uh, you know, small retracements, lower bottoms, higher highs. So it's going from lower left to upright. It's the very bottom panel of my screen. We didn't, we did not see that exact same pattern going, uh, taking place inside of gold, or we did not see that exact same pattern taking place inside of the uh, thirty-year Treasury. So, hmm, what does that mean? Does it mean that it's come so uncorrelated in a few hours' time that we should ignore it? No, I don't think so. If we take a look at this market. You would say, well, the yen 
Now, the yen currency pair versus the futures. In essence, the yen, the currency pair itself, is the larger of the group. Then bonds would be number two. And then you'd uh, take a look at uh, gold. So as far as which one is the fibber out here, I doubt that it's the yen. Now, that would bode well for both uh, gold and the 30-year uh, treasury. So let's kind of take a walk on the wild side and go look at uh, those instruments out here. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, treasury, 30-year treasury daily chart out here, well, you're going to see that price is trading right around Stevie's red line out here. So today's close is important. It should have the, if the yen we will look at the futures contract and continue moving higher. It should go ahead and switch the uh, signal or keep the signal in this case here. We take a look at bonds in the uh, bullish camp. Closing above Stevie's red line would be important. You're going to ask me what is that number. And because I can't read it, I'm going to have to just simply go to a, a backup plan here, which is fine. I like backup plans. 154.34 is the uh, number that um, that the 30-year uh, Treasury needs to close above. Let me give that number again. 154.34 is the uh, number out there. When it comes to gold, when it comes to gold, let me switch over. I'll show you a chart that uh, well, I'll show you a chart that I have featured inside the uh, newsletter here. Uh, ever since. Or, yeah, really ever since the uh, gold had that nice move last uh, week on Tuesday. So let me switch over to a different set of uh, a work workspace over here. And um, so gold, silver, let's say they have, you know, in their core, the mere fact that the yen is moving higher. Oh, it looks like the race is on. The race I'm watching is uh, not the uh, stock market race, but is the uh, is the race against Sweden and uh, New Zealand. And New Zealand is out. This is this potentially is the last leg, last race out of here that will uh, put the America's Cup in between, in between the uh, U.S. Yeah, the U.S. and uh, New Zealand out here. But we'll see. There's uh, still time left in the uh, trade in the racing session out here. Now. Here we're we'll taking a look at gold. Now I've got the continuous contract up at the uh, top, and this shows that. Uh, so here at the bottom on a daily basis. Now I'll just take a look at the daily numbers here for our oscillator and change line. In both cases, I've got the continuous contract. That is okay. We're taking a look at it. This says that gold needs to close above 1276.70. What if it doesn't close above it? Well, if it doesn't close above it, it could suffer the same outcome that it did the last time we saw this these, this exact same pattern that occurred out here last week on Tuesday, which was a move higher, taking out a swing point. In the case on uh, last week on Tuesday, it did it just slightly. And then price simply pulls back below Stevie's red line. And that basically was a, a bummer. It was a problem for gold. So uh, now the non Forming or confirming thing as we speak right now is mere fact that the uh, to the extent that the yen is continued continues to be correlated with gold then then uh, then that looks pretty good. So what's the signal now? I'd have to say the signal is bearish to neutral. It's not bullish with regard to uh, Goldilocks out there. With regard to uh, silver. Let's go take a look at uh, that request. I'm going to switch back to my other set of charts out here, and we'll see. Uh, and this is really perhaps the most important chart when we take a look at what's going on in the metals. It'll be silver. So let's do that when we get back from the break. I think there's some other requests out here, and we'll look at those. Uh, and anything else that you'd like. See you, Roger. See you. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow off uh, 60. S&P is down 8. So a number of questions out here. So thanks for all the questions. Let's finish this off by taking a look at silver here as far as the metals are concerned. And silver's looking just basically horrible. It's giving you about as bearish a message as you could find out here. And uh, it did that on uh, did that on Friday. And then it just continued with that message overnight. And as we speak right now, silver trading on to 1693. The biggest problem here with regard to silver is the pattern. And that price was able to come right up. Price, the price oscillator, I should say. Bottom panel of my screen was able to get right up to the zero level. That's this little red horizontal line. And then get deflected and move right below it. And so now what you've got is, uh, or price moves right below Stevie's red line, that oscillator and change line. It doesn't get much more bearish than that with regard to to silver. Uh, to what would change that? Uh, closing above 1722 as we speak right now. At this stage, we have to call it the way we see them. And at this stage, this says that price is headed back to the uh, swing point from back on uh, May the 9th. That was at the top of the swing point, the bottom. That I don't know. We'll just continue to play this one moment at a time. But right now, silver basically looks uh, horrible. Not good. Okay, question out here was with regard to IBM. And the question was, was uh, that a bottom today? Uh, something like that. What was the question exactly? Um, I'd have to go find it. But there was a question if we would just go take a look at IBM. So let's, in fact, go do that out here. So as we're taking a look at this chart, uh, just trying to identify, you know, types of signals, uh, price moving higher, doing less relative energy, things like that, or seventh wave moves out here. Let's just go see what we can find. We'll just do the wave counts out here. Uh, anything else? So on this chart, AG, that was your question. Uh, the nice thing about IBM is it's trading above Stevie's red line. Uh, so 150.29 is a, a number today that you'd be watching your 155. I doubt that it'll get down below that. But as long as it holds that level, then you at least have accumulation going on. So maybe that answers part of your question with regard to is it a bottom. Now, we'll come back to this chart. We'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, market profiles, see what we have out here to assist you. And this would have said the bottom would have been on uh, Friday, Thursday and Friday last week, as price was able to get down tag the bottom of its daily profile, 150.72. The actual low was 150.80 out there, so that qualifies. And that uh, structure of that box was a bullish structure. 
Price achieved that objective Friday by moving up to the high of the box, 154.46. Uh, price actually got up to, I'm sorry, the tie of the box was, yeah, 150. Yeah, okay, we yeah, have 154.46, and the high was 154.26 on Friday. Today, you've closed above it. Uh, what does that mean? You've closed above it. You've closed above uh, the. Uh, You've closed above the daily profile, but you can see in the case of IBM, you've got this fairly good size gap down with volume behind it, 12.5 million shares out here. So price has run right into a natural area of resistance. Hasn't hit that yet, but it's somewhere between 157.75 and 158.36. Uh, I would say this, uh, AG, if, uh, if you're looking for another signal, you want to see price close above that. There are a number of uh, areas that IBM needs to close above. 158.36 is one of them, 169.98, but take things one day at a time. Does it look like that was a uh, bottom out here inside of IBM? Potentially. If you go back to this little swing point out here, you go back a little bit further on the left-hand side of the chart, you have a nice little gap to the downside with volume, 12 million shares back on the trading day of October 18th. And what we can see here is this level was tested and rejected with much lighter volume, 5.6 million shares, 3.7, uh, 4.2, 3.2, a couple of days ago, 4.8. Uh, Thursday, 3.7. So there are not any sellers at this stage of the game down there. So, AG, I hope that that helps you out. And uh, keep those stories coming. Send us some herring so that we can uh, go ahead and eat that out here in TFNN land. Yeah, he's over in Stockholm or was in Stockholm. Let's go take a look at uh, Collegium. Pharmaceuticals. The case of this, uh, this had a, a nice move to the upside back on Friday, June 9th. 1.5 million shares to the upside, but ran right into resistance at the top of its weekly profile, 1142. So you know that that is a strong area of resistance out here. In order for this to continue higher, it's going to need to take that out. Now that completed uh, all in one swoop and A to B equals CD. It completed a Gartley sell pattern out here. If we take a look at that, here's your A, your B, and your C. And if you don't want know what I mean because you're not watching on Tiger TV. The A point, May 9th. The B point is a move up into May 16th. The retracement about a 0.786, lightly, slightly less than that, back on to May 31st. The one-to-one -one level was at 1051, then 1119. This made the one to 1.618 area in the 1205 range. Um, let me see. Is there anything else out here with regard to COLL? So you need to be careful because it did uh, set up a, a qualified Gartley cell pattern. You had a, a shooting star, right, that formed out here on Friday. So at the completion of that, and the cool thing about these shooting stars, cool or not cool, is that they either work or they don't. And unfortunately, they are working. And what I mean by they're working is you're you starting to see a continued move lower. Now, lower to where? Lower to where would be if it closes below 983. This is a key level for you if you are inside this stock, COLL. -L. 983, both the daily and the point of control are both at the same level. If it closes below that, you should anticipate 880 as being a price level where this would head to. Again, that's Collegium Pharmaceuticals. Had another request that said, hey, can we take a look at the uh, some of the components? Could I talk about the Qs and the FANG components out here? So I can. Uh, speak about them. Is there anything specific, Mr. Bill, that you would like to know about uh, those? Why don't you tell me what specifically uh, I can assist you with, and then that will make it a bit easier. And so while we're doing that, I'm going to go cover the general markets, and then we'll go ahead and come back out here so that you can get a feel for what it is that we're looking at. So the Dow's off 59, S&P down 7, NDX is down 54. Let's start by taking a look at the volatility index. It's up uh, $1.16. Um, well, I said let's start with it. I should have really pulled up the uh, chart. So let me see if I can find that real quickly. Let's look at the VIX uh, rate of change, one day rates of change chart out here. So that's going to pop up. And the reason that we're going to pay attention to it is because as we speak right now, and I don't know where this is going to close, but right now the one day rate of change in the spot volatility index, that means from Friday's close to where we're trading right now, it's 10.8%. 10.8%. Now, 
If you get a close that's anywhere above north of 10% today, the signal is bouncer bottom inside of the S&P 500. You see, bottom, my goodness, we haven't really even moved out here. I'm just uh, sharing with you th this tool and what it communicates to you and I. So uh, this tool suggests to us that if the markets were to close right now, I would tell you, it'd be very clear, bouncer bottom. Now we've got to go see if there's any other bottoming type signals out here, uh, which there could be. So that's the message of the spot volatility index. Let's go take a look at... Um Let's go take a look at the the, uh, the, 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 the the advanced decline oscillators. Let's go see where they're situated at. They are above zero in both the New York Stock Exchange, and I say both, I, how do I say triple-wise, in each of the following indices. The New York Stock Exchange, that means that it is bullish. The NASDAQ Composite, the Dow Jones, each of those indices, not the, uh, and that's it, we're talking the NASDAQ Composite, even with Friday's move. That advanced decline oscillator reading still above zero out there. Hmm. Kind of makes you think. See roads with TFN at the grid. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we were talking about uh, just the general market. So I've got a number of questions that uh, that I need to hit, and I will. But I want to just uh, go through and complete the general markets and uh, let you know what's going on out here. So, so if the spot volatility index 
again, closes above uh, 10 percent, one day rate of change. That says to us bottom. If we take a look at what the advanced decline data, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ Composite, Dow, they're all above zero. It says that it's really buyers that are the ones in control out here. Uh, if I take a look at where the spot volatility index is traded, it's above the 50-day exponential moving average, 11 and a quarter. But we're going to go with the 10-day percentage as being the priority out here, priority seating. If we can continue with priority seating out here, we can see that the New York Stock Exchange, if we just simply look at, look, if we look, 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 you know what I mean out there, if we just simply look at where its summation of all of its advanced, previous advanced decline data number is at the moment, it's $90.55. It's above zero. Is that bullish or bearish? It's outright bullish. That's inside the New York Stock Exchange. If we go ahead, we dive a little further down into the New York Stock Exchange, and we just take a look at the top 100 U.S. issues. That is the center panel. And we look at the top 100 international issues that make up those, you know, 3,500 components, which include a bunch of closed-end bond funds. I wish that it didn't, but it does. Um, what we can see here, that's neither here nor there. What is here is we can see that inside the uh, U.S., top U.S. traded issues out here. There's no problems. It's not at new all-time highs. That was done back in March at 95.38. Here at 94.45. But there is no problem here. If you look at the international side of these stocks, they are at new or close to new all-time highs, which were set two, four, five, six trading sessions ago. Not No damage that is out here. So the message here is bullish, not bearish out there, as everybody would think from uh, last week's Friday's activity. If we go a little bit further, and I take a look at because it was really two indices that got crushed, right? You had the orange crush going inside the semiconductors. Well, if we look at their horizontal trading range levels, all the price did was immediately come back to an area of support. Inside the semiconductor, that was at 1073. That's the blue line. That's the horizontal trading range boundary line. Inside the weekly chart, it's at 1073. 78. We're trading at 1082.75. Price came right back to that, tested it last week, and rejected it. You're trading just slightly above that. And inside the monthly chart, it's at 1066. So the semiconductors, which got you simply uh, crushed in a one day, even today, uh, you know, they're trading a little bit lower. If we take a look at where the indice is trading into, it is trading right into support. I don't make this stuff up, folks. This is just simply what the markets are doing. You can take the other side of the trade. I don't see it as we speak right now. That could be a different story come 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, tomorrow, you know. But right now, what has occurred inside this indice is price just coming down to test a level of support. If we go take a look at the NDX 100, well, slightly more of an issue here. Price ran into resistance on its monthly chart. That's the left-hand side now, but in red at 57.69. But the month is not over. Okay, inside the weekly chart, we can see that today price got down very close to and tested its level of support. That's 56.23. And on the daily chart, we just can go ahead and take a look at those uh, trend lines that one of our denners assisted us with. And that was uh, Z inside the Tiger's Den. And we can see that price just fell right back to that level. So again, inside the NDX 100, what's being done it's just simply support is being tested. Now, if we go fast forward into the 30-minute chart, right, to identify what it's communicating to you and I, price was moving lower, doing less relative energy, was doing that this morning as it made its lows, lows or bottom. I don't know, but that was done at about 10 o'clock this morning. Was doing it with that pattern. Well, what just occurred here at 1.30, it's now 1.34, is you just had your first bullish signal, your first cavalry signal that a bottom is forming on this time frame chart. Now, what you like to see is follow through. Follow through just says a little bit of a higher close here, but more what you want to see, and price also came back and tested Stevie's red line. It also was testing just a short-term descending trend line. That's this red diagonal arrow to the downside out here. If price is able to overcome 57.16.60, that's where the snipers are, that's where the sellers are, well, that will give you a clue that the NQ is simply forming at least a uh, viable bounce. Whether it's the bottom, I don't know. But there are clues out here that say, yeah, 
it is. And that's what's going on inside of the daily chart. And though, I'm sorry, in the 30-minute chart. In the daily chart out here, we're talking about the uh, current, the September contract. It needs to clear Stevie's red line. That's at 58, 56, 14 as we speak. You know that those numbers are going to change slightly, but uh, 58.55, 58.56 are the numbers to go ahead and pay attention to, and that is inside of the NQ. So you tell me, what are the markets doing? I can share with you what these charts are communicating to you and I, and uh, we'll just go ahead and see how that plays out. Now, back to some of the other questions that were out there. Well, this kind of feeds right into it. Would I take a look at some of the FANG stocks? Well, if we take a look at some of those FANG stocks, one that was requested was Amazon. If I take a look, if I just shared with you this one chart right now, uh, and I have the market profiles, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And I think I touched on this on Friday. But what we can do is we can study this right now. You see this uh, very linear move to the downside out here. When we see this, and you don't see it that often, this right here. So at, at 1020 is when the uh, trading desk took its orders. What trading desk? I don't know. Was it more than one trading desk? I don't know. Was somebody with large positions inside of Amazon? Can I prove this? I can't, but it is like a it is like a heat signature of a uh, missile. If we if this was not the the you know, the NORAD defense system that we had out here, when you see this kind of linear move out here, nothing big, nothing really big. It's just telling you that a trading desk has orders or trading desks have orders to liquidate a position and do it in a quiet fashion out here. Now, it did it inside of Amazon. Then, you, of course, you had a big, huge move to the downside. Who knows what really caused <clears throat> that? That was some pretty good volume. That was exactly at the uh, 14, when was it? Oh, that was the end of day. Uh, that's 1450. So that's close on end of day out here with regard to other systems that may have been triggered. The, the point is, um, has, is, that, is that selling desk still at it? And the answer is no. We don't see that kind of a linear type move out here inside of Amazon. The biggest linear move, the smoothest one, was in NVIDIA, NVDA out here. And as we take a look at it, take a look at that linear move to the downside, right? When you start seeing these things popping up, FANG stocks as an example, so this is telling you, is there some real trouble out here, Mr. Bill? That's my interpretation. Is there really some trouble inside of NVIDIA? It doesn't mean that it won't go a bit lower, but what we can say in taking a look at this is that linear move, that desk, that trade desk or desks that were out there, they're gone. They finished their work. They finished it at about 2.30 on uh, Friday. Do I know the exact time? No, but they were done. They were done. They were clearly done by 2.45 out there, may have done just a bit earlier, and they were able to head out to the Hamptons after that. We can see this in all of those FANG-type stocks out there, and what we know about it today is uh, that trading desk they're still at the Hamptons. Their work is done. Did they unload their entire position? Probably not. Why? Because the NDX is going to hit the 8,500 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got a request out here asking if we can take a look at two symbols, PCMI and WLDN. Wondering if I should take my loss in both of them. So I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know where you're in, what your trading strategy was, and so on and so forth. Let's do this. Let's at least take a look at both equities and try to figure out uh, what they're doing so that it can assist you with regard to your trading, your investments here, sir. So if we take a look at the first one, WLDN, this is Will Dan Group out here. Here's what we uh, know. This thing had a nice little breakout. Let's turn off the market profiles for a moment. So let's just look at it this way first, just a uh, kind of like a raw chart, so to speak. And what we can see out here, I don't know what caused this uh, breakout, but there was a breakout party on the trading session of March the 10th. That was your sign of strength volume out there was 859,000 shares now it makes a move it comes back and it tests that breakout area with 389,000 shares so test it with you know less than half of the volume out here uh, you have uh, tests of that uh, breakout area on lighter volume that uh, goes forward for uh, several several uh, days and then moves higher. So this has support at 28 at that 2849 level. If we go ahead and we put our market profiles up here, this says that you've got support all the way down to 3021. I would say until those levels are broken, uh, it says to uh, well that's what it's doing. Again, I don't know if you bought it at the top or or what, but this is where for price to move back into those areas um, and do it on light volume doesn't look too bad. We've got a caller. Let's go to uh, Alex uh, in uh, Newton. Now, Alex, are you actually in Newton today? Yes, I am actually in Newton today. That's oh, okay. Day. Okay, good, good. Nice, nice to hear doing? from you. How are you doing, Steve? Very good, very good. Uh, okay, so, so you, my, my you, are is... an you are an adventure man. I know, yes. That's and good. I'm still That's alive. Good. That's a good thing. That is, that is. Okay. So yeah, I know you've got a question about the general market. I have questions about, you know, all of the uh, all of the good food you're eating and all of the good hiking that you're doing. But let's talk about the general <laughs> markets. Okay. Okay. So my question is on Friday, I closed all my retirement portfolios, all of them. Okay. And I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Uh, my question is, uh, would you do that expecting some sort of correction or you would do it gradually and uh, 
Mm -hmm. Basically, that's the question. Well, the, the, I, it's hard to answer that question because you would have to really take a look at each individual um, stock and try to make some decisions as to what the charts would look like they're doing, right? Because the, if we go take a look at the general market, um, you know, it's going to include the entire uh, group of stocks out there. Or we might be looking at a sector, we look at 108 inside the uh, NASDAQ 100 as an example. If the question is, what is the general market doing, and you're going to make your decisions about some of your holdings about that, then um, what I would share with you is I believe that the uh, market is headed higher in a big way. Not a small way, not a tiny way, not a large way, a huge way. That uh, that this that the NDX 100, which got uh, just simply uh, taken to the cleaners, so to speak, okay, because it was nothing more than some funds that were doing orderly, orderly selling, orderly lightening the load, orderly liquidation. I don't know what was behind it, but uh, it was just not full out. Um, hey, we're at a top. Um, I believe that these markets, I believe the signals are inside the NDX 100 specifically um, is headed to 8,500 or so. If, if you had that data or you believe that to be the case, how does that change the question that you, that you asked me? Does it change at all? Uh, uh, I believe that any correction like we had on Friday, uh, it requires some time to recover. Uh, I don't think the market from here will go through the roof. Okay. And to be honest with you, I'm looking to short semiconductors, looking to short software, and to go along uh, basic materials, financials, and uh, industrials. Yeah. I think it's it's a it's big time uh, for rotation at the moment. Okay. So let's look at the semiconductors here first, okay, because you mentioned that as one of the areas that you'd be looking at shorting. And if we take a look at the uh, semis as we speak, and I'm looking at a monthly chart right now, so that way we take out the uh, daily noise. Uh, there is not a uh, sell signal anywhere as we speak right now inside of the semiconductors. Again, so when you start talking about 401k retirement type accounts out there, you know, a lot of my decision would be based on what's going on on the monthly chart now is price up near some resistance zones out here going back into 2000 the answer is yes but if we take a look at just the a to b equals cd pattern that is out here inside of the uh, semis uh this is going to go ahead and take price up oh, that that didn't work real well sorry about that um let me just take the uh, longer term view of this uh price is headed to 1285 1487 1710 as a as price targets in it this move that we've seen inside the semis since august of 2015 um is as on a is on a is on just a straight shot to the north out there now a lot of people will go ahead and say that straight shot you know is a, a bearish sign well back in 2000 it wasn't until you actually saw some type of bearish reversal signal that took place in may of 2000 there's not anything close near anywhere around that suggests when I take a look at a longer term chart for the semis that uh, Friday was just nothing more than uh, some orderly selling. It wasn't as if the uh, people were running for the doors out here. So we're in, it's, you know, we're also in, Alex, an unfavorable seasonal cycle uh, time period. So you can expect some jostling out here. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it yet. It doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But you're asking me to go take a look at the charts and, and, and give you what I believe the read is coming from those charts. If I look at the weekly, the weekly says, okay, yeah, you had a key reversal week last week. The prior week's high and low was exceeded. So it just makes resistance the last week's high, 1149.86. But other than that, you know, the trend is your friend. It hasn't even come close to breaking any kind of trend on a weekly basis. Um, so, uh, yeah, and price just simply in the semis pulled down to levels of support. And, and we tried to show those. I'll show those to you again, Alex, share those with you. And that's just simply the horizontal trading range levels. Inside the daily, it's 1073. Pulled right back to it. Inside the weekly, it's a 1078. 
inside the uh, monthly. It's a 1066. You know, you close below 1066, and then it would really go ahead and peak my interest. But all that really has taken place thus far in the price damage area is price just coming back to levels of support. Yeah, I agree with you, but there's a lot of damage in many uh, high beta stocks, unfortunately. Yeah, will, is that is that where your portfolio is is heavily uh, uh, weighted? No, no. Right now, I'm eighty six percent in cash. Yeah. <laughs> after Friday. Okay. Uh, look, then, then, then you know, until you see the bullish case, uh, wait for a uh, continued uh, pullback. Uh, that might take place uh, next Friday. The market's going to move okay. back. It's going to pull back into about next Friday, and then it should take off from there. All righty? Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. You bet. Thank you for calling, Alex. That was Alex and Newton Mass. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with hosts Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin, on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So back to the request line out here. Uh, we had a request to go take a look at uh, PCMI as well. And uh, this, uh, we're looking, we have a weekly chart that's up on our screen out here. Again, the question was, you know, is it time to sell? 
the uh, position or take your loss in both of them. Again, I don't know where you're at in it. Let's just uh, take a look at the stock chart and from this gauge what it's communicating to us. We can see that this equity here, again, this is a weekly chart back in July 25th, 2016. This is where this equity had a huge sign of strength. Went down from, uh, was a low of 1093, traded from 1093 to 1701. That's a 70% move in that uh, equity during that one week. It didn't stop there, continued to move up into the 32 uh, area out here. So big, huge move, big, huge sign of strength out there. This could be where this equity is pulling back to. Now, it has not tested the top of that uh, week, July 25th. That's at 1701. You're at 1930. So that certainly is game. If we were to get below 1701, that would then say you could get all the way down to the bottom. That could feel some pain, 1093. Um, I'm not saying that's where it's headed to, but you want to watch 1701. It's at 1930. If I just take a look at uh, weekly and daily profiles out here looking for support, whoops, what you don't like or what you'd like to see this week is you'd like to see this close above 1974. That's what was tested last week. If it can close above 1974, then this thing may bounce to 22, 28, I don't know. But if it doesn't close above 1974, it would suggest 1701 is coming at you. So, again, I don't know what your long-term trading strategy is on this. Uh, um, but th those are the, the numbers that I provided you, the 1701. I feel comfortable with that. Price gets below that. 1093 is opened up and comfortable with the 1974 as a level for you to be watching uh, at the uh, close on Friday should you go ahead and remain in that position. So thanks for writing in. Hope that that helps you out. Let me see if there's any other requests that came in here that I can get to. Yeah, I've got one here. It says MRO uh, looking for a long entry. So that is Marathon, MRO. Let's go take a look at that. It, when you guys send it, guys, gal, send emails, give me the time frame too that you're thinking about, if this is like an investment or what it might be. Now, in the case of Marathon Oil, certainly I think you're going to want to time this with oil in itself. If we're just looking for what Marathon is doing, it's coming all the way back in, in here, when you say all the way back into where? The swing point of October 31st, 2016, there was 126,000 shares uh, that are out there on that week, and it looks like that low was tested last week, and it was tested with 78,000. So you have a swing point tested with quite a bit lighter volume. So that's what it's done on the weekly basis. Now, you said you're looking for an entry point. What you'd certainly like to see is either a confirmation that uh, crude has turned up. That would be one confirmation. And the weekly, by the way, the test of the swing was 26 million shares, was tested with 24, 15, and then 17. So that testing uh, says, okay, maybe out here. What you'd really like to see is some kind of sign of strength. So short of a turn in oil, and you'd want to go back and take a look at this chart with regard to it and its correlation to light sweet crude. Um, let me do one other thing out here from a daily chart. Let me give you my red line number out here, because if it were to get above that, that might be another signal. So either a nice big sign of strength, which we don't have inside of Marathon, Marathon Oil, MRO, or a close above, it looks like 12, well, this is interesting. I need this chart to update. On Friday, the number was 12, oh, it is, so 1257. So this is interesting. So you've had a test of a weekly swing point with lighter volume. And right now today, you've got price trading above my red line at 1256. You can take a stab at it. You know, just use proper position sizing out here. Don't let it close below Stevie's red line, though. Hey, folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear in mind, David White, is up next. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a great, magical Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.